What's good, people? Welcome back to Hidden Hands. It's your man Cruz here. I got my brother Trav with me. Yeah, yeah. Back again, back again. Back again, just that fast. What's up with y'all? with y'all, man. What's good, man? How you been, Cruz? Everything is everything. How you feeling, my brother? Oh, man, it's been good, man. It's been good, man. Yeah. Chilling, chilling. What you got up for today, man? How, how? Uh, well, I mean, we could start with a little recap from our our, our little excursion the other <laughs> night. But we had pulled up on um, we went to the seminar. What was it? Y'all ain't gonna lie. It was kind of fire. The gathering it was spot. Cool. I got stuck because um, so basically, um, I had a dinner to go to, but I went with Trav to this um, this spot out here in Atlanta called the Gathering Spot. Yeah, and um, the young and that. Actually, On that, yeah, started owns it. it. It was two young guys who started it. Yeah, uh, Ryan Wilson and uh, TK. Right. Uh, sorry, TK, for not saying your whole name, but we know you as TK. But um, yeah, they one of the the owners, Ryan Wilson, who started the the gathering spot, which is like a cool little entrepreneur, yeah. uh, kind of like a headquarters if you're an entrepreneur and you want to meet other business professionals. So he well he had his dad up there, um, and they were talking about you know just Big business, man. Fortune 500 companies and how to scale a business and sell a business. So yeah. we stumbled upon that. And that was pretty interesting, though. I ain't gonna lie. It was yeah. a lot of game. I was there just passing time, just checking the spot with Trav, and I ended up getting a lot of good information, you know, from um, from Mr. Wilson. It was a lot yeah. of good uh, a lot of good gems in there yeah, I tried about to hit taking up, risk. Yeah, I try to hit up a lot of things like that because yeah. uh, in the music, you make a you 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 make your money, but you know what I mean. There's no telling how long you'll be in the position you're in. So I try to invest my money outside of music, yeah. which isn't as easy as people make it sound. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's mm -hmm. like if my interests are all in music, then how can I figure this out? But I go to things like that to help me figure it out, and you know, I typically learn a lot of good information. But it just it just blew my mind how. It was a father and son, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they were kind of, you could tell the son had looked up to his father in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then you could tell the son, the father actually was proud of his son for what he accomplished. And they were just kind of going back and forth about the things they learned and, you know, entrepreneurship and selling companies and stuff like that, man. Yeah. So it was pretty cool, man. No, it was dope. Yeah. And I, I did my research on the gathering spot and um, I saw a lot of, a lot of people that I know that had, you know, been out there before. Yeah. They had the vice president out there. A yeah, lot they of big built names. they built it up. Yeah, they built it's it dope. up. They had did a deal with uh, I forgot the name of that investment company, but last night they were talking about they raised like twenty million dollars mm -hmm. since they've been open. So that's pretty fire. Yeah, so that's that's yeah. You got to figure out ways to invest your money other than just spending it on shit and music. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna it's, lie, because people get these checks out here and they think this music should last forever. Yeah, and you find out real fast it don't because after Which is, taxes yeah. and everything. Which is funny because you know it don't last forever because you rarely see anybody last forever in this. You know what I mean? Yeah. You see, there are a few families you see go on and do things over and over and over, but rarely you see people. You know, there there comes a stop in it, like yeah. you know what I mean? In the you being the hottest or you being the greatest or whatever. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty no, interesting. It's, it's important. To, um, it's important to remain humble because one of the things that I that I took away was just the way the OG was carrying himself. You know what I'm saying? You would never think he touched that type of money. Nah, you know what I'm saying? That's he carried crazy himself part, right? super low key. Yeah. His watch was nice, but super humble, yeah. low key, chill. Yeah. You know, we'd be around people in the culture that they might have Bro, uh, I, point zero 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 point one one of what he <laughs> ever made in his life and be acting like they got more money than he ever has made. Has it ever been like that though? Like, have you noticed that? Because for me, when I work with like a person who's been super successful. Yeah. This is this on the come up. It the come up time. I work with an artist who's super successful, super fire. Like yeah. they, everybody expects them to be an asshole, and they wouldn't be an asshole. And then it would be an artist that you that just would expect got some to money. be humble. Just got and some money. In and they be the worst. The new money be crazy. Yeah, it would be crazy, bro. Nah, so. it's the ones that's a season that's been in the game long enough to know mm -hmm. <laughs> that money it leave faster than it got to you. So yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I, I deal with that a lot. And then, you know, we're in the age of social media, and you can make it look incredible. You might not even be at your spot, and mm -hmm. you're making it look like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you got something going on. You always in the mix or doing certain things. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's pretty much, yeah. People really bank on that shit, man. They really live by that, you know, that, 
that fake life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, creating these moments and, like, just being in the mix. You could tell, you know, people that go straight to their phone when they jump into a situation. It's a lot of, but I think what you're saying is just a lot of broke people in the mix. But it, I think deeper than that is just like it's cool. It's cool. It's we just all irrelevant. Let's yeah, not I mean, say broke. Listen, just we all irrelevant. get to it. Yeah, it's just we all trying to get to it. But it's like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. No, I'm embellishing what you mean. It's, a lot. It's kind of uh, a lot of keep your fronts up and yeah, you know, it's a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors. Smoke a lot mirrors. of smoke and smoke mirrors. There mirrors. it is. That's what we trying smoke to say. Mirrors. When was that? Like we show people. Even yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Or when the whatever day we shot the other episode. Yeah. I wanted to uh, address because. I want. I didn't. I don't know if I made my point clear. I wasn't trying to say that the producers nowadays suck and there's no fire producers, mm-hmm. and that Usher just went and made a shitty album. That wasn't the point. The point I was just trying to make was that when Luther Vandross and older people came back in our generation, that wasn't their generation. Mm-hmm. They went. They had producers that they could go to and that can push their sound forward mm-hmm. and kind of reintroduce them. And uh, we kind of saw this with Kanye West. Yeah. When he came out, Common yeah. was, like, when Kanye came out, I was in high school. So yeah. Common, all that stuff that Common did before wasn't really on my radar as much as it would have been. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was younger. So Kanye kind of reintroduced Common to us, but with a newer sound. Mm-hmm. So we we took to Common as a new artist when he had been in the an artist for a while. And 90s, I just feel like yeah. today with producers, if you're an artist like Usher, you can't really do that. It's the producers who can help you do that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's all. That's the only point I was trying to make. I feel you. I That's still it. I still feel like That's it. just in terms of in his world, I think, you know what I mean? Yeah. He did call, good. Call it what you will, but he, he, did, good. he did his thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? A lot, I see a lot of older good. people, like a lot of older legacy artists try to make that type of comeback. And you can yeah. just tell like, it did, this is, all right, so this this is an interesting topic I want to get to mm-hmm. is is the importance of your team. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is a very critical example, right? Mm-hmm. Like Usher coming back. Say what you will. Yeah. If you love the album, if you hated it, you knew you knew about like I mean, just all the things, all the opportunities that were laid out in front of him, and the mm-hmm. way they maximize those opportunities mm-hmm. speak a, a volumes about who's around you, who's a part of your team day to day, who's when you're getting in the studio, who's going to help you curate your projects and help you with your music. Mm-hmm is absolutely critical because I know a lot of talent and a lot of people that, you know, have so much. It's like know. the, like artists have like unlimited potential, right? That's what uh-huh. basically I was going to get. Okay, they have unlimited potential, but they don't have a great team. But the team ain't there. They, mm-hmm. you know, like, um, there's a lot of talk around this independent lifestyle, which is great. I, I applaud it. I do believe artists should, you know, um, especially if they're capable of it, should get into situations where they could retain their ownership and still work towards being these mm-hmm. level of successful artists. But what you start noticing is, do you know how to execute? Do you yeah. know, do you have the people around you that do their p- job really well to help mm-hmm. you to be able to execute and perform at a high level? Because this is a, this is a heavy sport. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's been established since way before we were born. And this, you know, if you can't compete in this system mm-hmm. on the level of a Kanye who became the first uh, number one independent um, artist and a couple weeks in a row at that and made a hell of a successful run, but Kanye's a billionaire. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? He yeah. obviously made some good moves to get himself in a right position. He pays people. He puts people in position. He, he, has, has, he has to have, I think Kanye has to have some kind of uh, awesome team. Well, here's the thing is what, what I'm getting at is like he has three of us in the room. Yeah. He's got four Mike Deans around. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he has like a good, solid base, like a good team. And even mm-hmm. if he interchanges pieces, there's mm-hmm. always those people that are going to keep that creative flowing. They're going to help him with like, yo, the marketing. Yeah. How are we going to connect? Ideas and seem to on, match. Yeah. They, right. they seem to match yeah. having a good team. You know what yeah. I mean? Like for the tribulations that, you know what I mean? He constantly goes through as yeah, an artist. Yeah. It's like he go, he has these moments of where it's like, okay, you should be decimated as an artist. Mm-hmm. And then he comes back with a campaign that's like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not like, the art, and people. it's not like, what, to piggyback off what you're saying, it's not like he just sat there and said, hey, I'm going to do this at every point. It's me, 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 me. Yeah. It's more of a team that kind of comes up with 
how yeah. they're gonna how they're gonna roll this out or how they're gonna you know what I mean make yeah. these comebacks and like it's not coincidental coincidental no it's not and he's he's definitely a visionary so like he is a uh, behind a lot of this stuff, but there are people that influence him, that are around him. He keeps a lot of young energy, to your point of of staying mm -hmm. with younger producers. He keeps mm -hmm. younger people around. He has his own knowledge of production, so it just adds to the value of the end, the end product. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have other examples of artists that, you know, are are pushing, are fighting, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a real uphill battle, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? To get to that level of success and, you know, having the proper team, having the proper structure is everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That can make or break you as an artist. Yeah. You know, another, so. Another, another, um, kind of, it kind of ties into what you're saying about that. It also goes back to what we were talking about, about that seminar, about the, uh, uh, Mark Wilson talking is the thing that stood out to me about it was he kept explaining how he would work for these companies and he never cared about what his position was. Mm -hmm. He just did what needed to be done mm -hmm. in these certain areas. And a lot of times people take that kind of cliche. But yeah. I feel like what you're saying about the team, I feel like that kind of plays into making a good team is, okay, the manager might have to go buy an outfit mm -hmm. for the artist because he doesn't have an outfit for tonight's show. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or <laughs> or it, it's going to be so many, the engineer may have to, take on the role as the producer uh -huh. or to fi help get the project finished. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Where the mix engineer may have to come in and help the tracking engineer get the things together for what they need. You know what yeah. I mean? So it, it kind of becomes where it's like, I feel like when you look at things as in, in a bigger picture, it kind of helps with your team. You know what I mean? I kind of think like that's kind of the team you would want. I think that, so the, the method that he brought up, him being CEO, he didn't understand what that meant or really cared. Yeah, right? that was crazy when he said that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I thought that was heavy because I think that, that CEO. if that was adapted by some of these label heads and executives, mm -hmm. if they would get in the mix and get in the streets a little more and understand the culture, I think it would change. I think it mm -hmm. would change things. I don't think they give a fuck, but I think it would affect because a lot of them don't know. Like, they don't got the sauce. They yeah. don't know. They're not, in the touch, they're not in touch with what's actually going on. Yeah, they're, they're They've like... They've been behind that desk so long. Yeah, so, like, just being in the mix, like, he would go to every onboarding, training, yeah. training any, every meeting, he would be, you know, in the trenches mm -hmm. with his employees, you know, any any issues or whatever the case, he was in the trenches. Yeah. Any CEO, they sit behind the desk looking at the numbers and being like, mm -hmm. how can we fix that? Move this around, fire these thousands of people so we can get some more money mm -hmm. and put it to this and whatever more the case. Of a, more of a systematic involvement. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Versus an actual hands-on. Yeah. Every employee is going to meet me. At least said he met every employee and he, he had like everybody. thousands of employees. Yeah. But you know, and that means just that's, being in the room. He don't have to shake 7,000 hands, yeah. but look, but that energy, you being in the, the room the and having that the energy. leadership, right. you know what I mean? I think, I think that, that translates. That helps. That, we don't have that. I don't think we have that a lot so. in, in the music so. game. No, we don't. This is interesting to see how other businesses and things like yeah. that operate and, you know. And they operate successfully, by the way. Like, you know, this is a man building a business from the dirt, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then taking his knowledge and then building it to having like up to 7,000 employees, you know what yeah. I mean? Like some of my labels got a couple hundred employees and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't got a clue. So yeah, I think that I love that method and that, that kind of struck me because that's an issue that we have. Like if I go and sit down um, with an A&R and I'm telling them about the next thing and they kind of are just like, okay, cool, whatever. And then it ends up going crazy and now they're on my line or, yeah. you know what I mean? It's it like, bro, like, I was right there telling yeah. and, you about and, this. And not just that I was right there telling you, it's, I'm not in the same position. Like I, I was telling you at this at the time for us to, to strike. Yeah. Now you want to strike when they struck. Everybody's striking. Everybody, like, you know what I mean? They got it. We, I brought it to you at this point to right. where we could do it, you know? Right. So but having yeah. these type of people, having these, because what I would assume is as a label head you would want the people that can get shit early because if something win if you mm -hmm. get everything fairly early right for the mm -hmm. most part of course there's going to be times where you enter a bidding war but if you could catch things early and you do have a, a understanding of culture and know what's going to move and what could mm -hmm. potentially break one thing break at a low rate it could take care of the budget for the fucking year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if people were really too tuned in and tapped in and had some fucking balls and was ready to make some real moves. Yeah. Like 
the game would be a little different and these labels would be talking a little different. Like the, you know, some of the um, top performing labels, they're kind of comfortable because they got the biggest artists in the game. Like, yeah, of course, Republic is the biggest label. Yeah. Go look at, go Google the roster. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just, you know, I think it's, I think it's a lot to be said. And I, I was just, I mean, just off that one 30 minute conversation, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I was really inspired and it, and it just kind of struck me just going into today of like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to be yeah. in the yeah. trenches with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to be in the be trenches. You got to understand. Yeah, and it just shows you the mindset. You know what I mean? The yeah. mindset, and, and it's and it's trippy because you were saying about executives and stuff, but it's like the executive. We take the the title, the executive, the music executive. That shoe gets filled by some people who aren't trying to be executives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you get to that point where you take like we had this thing in hip hop. We had this trend in music where. The next, the, like, if you're the biggest guy, like, you may produce, have going a producer run, and then your next step is to go into an office somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you ain't been, you've been in the studio out of touch, low key. Mm -hmm. You just been making it, and then your stuff became the hot stuff. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't know, that doesn't necessarily say that you can do it again. So sometimes I'll see, like, executives, they'll make certain people executives that are great people and have certain skill sets. But their skill set might not be helping to move the overall industry forward mm -hmm. and to see the things that need to be seen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. No, I feel you. It's an it's 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 inter interesting thing. It is. And I think that, I think that, uh, I don't know, I feel like it's a new, there's a new wave coming through. Like I, I really admire and look up mm -hmm. to you know, LVRN, who we were uh, visiting their location here in the city. Yeah, we put up on them too. You know what I'm saying? Justice and his crew is doing incredible shit. Killing shit. And they're younger, bro. Like, they're just, they're in the trenches. Like, they get it. And when they go to events, like, I was at, uh, I was at Eve's um, party um, a little while ago, mm -hmm. and um, Justice was there, and he had, you know, it was a couple executives in the building, they Mm -hmm. Hollering at him Like in his mm -hmm. ear Like you know what I'm seeing saying what he Like got going on Seeing what he got going on How I'm sure trying to figure out How they could do some business Like mm -hmm. he's like You know He just gets it Like you know what I'm saying That whole movement You couldn't recreate that In nah. a system You know nah. And like a label Like traditional label system Like what he's doing With with Summer and Black yeah. and, and he and he gets it know. Because he even went And got um Brian Michael Cox. Yeah. And made him the president over exactly. there. And it's an exactly. R&B label. Right. And who the fuck else you gonna get? Yeah. The R&B. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It yeah, goes, nah. it goes, it just shows you how much he knows. You know what I mean? Nah, they're tapped in, bro. He's tapped like, in. Like, yeah. And that thing, see, bringing in Brian, it's like, there's people that deserve a shot, at least a shot. Let mm -hmm. me show you something. Mm -hmm. Like, that are more in tune with the culture that are, you know, um, Multifaceted, actually, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That have been in the game, like that should and get a shot putting, over the the putting hits on the board right now. Yeah, over the people that read the data really well. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of a lot of data driven people out here. Yeah, because now it seems like we, the music industry is has more data than it ever has. Man, has if you, ever. If you got the sauce, you got the contacts, mm -hmm. you can make shit shake. You know what I'm saying? You can bring some things yeah. to life. You could find a diamond in the rough. You know, and I think that that's a lot of that is lacking. You know, I think, you know, um, I'll be perfectly honest. Like, I'm not a big fan, per se, of Ice Spice, the music side. Mm. But what her team has done mm. with her is, like, it's commendable, yeah, bro. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, And it shows. Um, yeah, it's a difference. Like, having her it's early. In, and, yeah. Having that early and developing and so what it became, it's like, you know what I'm saying? She's still rocking with the same crew. Mm -hmm. She got her producer that she went to school with. She got the, mm -hmm. the manager that found her early. Like, you know, she got her solid core team and they built around that foundation. And you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Superstar status. Like, I think that, you know, I think that's important. I think that, you know. Um, just opinion, just opinion based. Yeah. Um, you speaking on an artist like Ice Spice. Mm-hmm. We see what her team does for her. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like in today's time, the music has to match? I think that, see, because I come from what I'm, what I'm avoiding, because I know I get caught up in this, is like having 
getting away from like the older mentality of what music is to me, right? Mm -hmm. And just appreciating the effects of music on a younger generation and how, you know, because we were hip to shit that our parents were like, yo, you can't listen to that. Like imagine, you know, mm -hmm. when when some of these albums was coming out as we were coming up, my, my folks were like, yo, you can't. Like, that's too crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Or, or but it was some crazy shit it. back in the day, too. We had a so lot of crazy I mean, shit. But, you know, like, maybe our parents or our older generation didn't understand, but we were, this was like, this is the shit. We were yeah. on that. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to, you know, I'm doing a better job, I think, of, like, appreciating that. And I think that that's one of those things. I don't have to, like, but I yeah. respect it. I respect the movement. Yeah. I respect how it was put together. I don't have to listen to the records. Yeah. But I do respect it, and I think that, you know what I mean? Like, they're creating their own sound. They're staying um, tight as a team. And um, I think that's the way you win in this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's the way you win. When people get away from what brought them in and started helping them with being successful as artists and they start trying to reinvent themselves and, you know, um, they do it the wrong way because it's almost like a break away from everything that worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now let's try some new shit. Let's it experiment. Gets, yeah, and it, and it gets, gets weird. It gets real. Because it's like the people that were keeping you fly and keeping your shit hot, you're just totally just Xing them out and trying yeah. some whole other shit. Like, you know what I mean? I think there's just ways to do it. Yeah. You know, like. you could still grow as an artist, but. Yeah. If you've been, if your team has been handling this and then you just replace the team. Yeah. It's going to be different. For sure. There's no, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no sure. way for it not to be different. So, for sure. It's like in that, you kind of got to tread lightly because you don't want to be one of those kind of artists that run into you're doing the same thing over and over and over right. and over again. Cause yeah. I feel like that's kind of where a lot of that stuff stems from is a lot of people are getting the artist's head. Cause I feel like that's the number one thing. Yeah. It's the artist's ear. People always want to be in the artist's ear. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's irrelevant motherfuckers that's, that's in the artist's ear. Sometimes people that's helpful. Sometimes it's people that are just there to do detriment to the team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To, to divide the team. Like, it's so it's so much that's in an artist's ear that eventually an artist looks back and they start reading comments and they start hearing this stuff. But damn, you dropped this song. It sounds the same. This stuff, all your stuff sounds the same. And I feel like that's a tricky place to be in yeah. as an artist because now I want something different from my team. Yeah. But I also want to still be... I, I, what you're really yearning for is to be received the way you were received off the last stuff. I'm going to tell you, So though, it's difficult. It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to tell you, though, stay out them comments, artists. Like, stay, uh, damn near stay off the internet while you're in your zone. Mm -hmm. Like, let somebody help you um, run the creative. Even having them run it by you, get your permission, mm -hmm. how you want it to go. But stay off the internet. And this is for every artist. Like, you know, because um, Justice actually mentioned something last night about it. Just like, social media really kind of fucked the game up for artists because it's a necessary evil, right? And being active online, promoting, you gotta be. That's being the out here, you interacting, you. get yep. your shit on TikTok, all the, all the label shit, right? Yeah. But people that get so caught up and addicted, they're going to obviously being on this, this certain platform, they're going to be reading in the comments, yeah. digging, you know, going down yeah. that wormhole, finding like people bloggers and people talking shit and all this other and it really throws yeah it really throws off the the creative yeah. you know what i'm saying because it's like as long as you could stay tapped in and stay focused on your vision and what's going on not saying to be completely out of tune yeah with your fans but there's creative things that you could do to like bro like focus on your art and as you're creating and you're getting caught up on some of this shit is controlled. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, there, a there's it, a lot yeah. of this shit is like, it's like controlled, um, hate, controlled, like, yeah. just, it's, and, it's and sickening, part of it is, bro. And then part of it is part of the promotion line. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. a line that comes from these labels that goes to these blog sites and that's part of promotion so you right. can get caught up in that. Yeah. There's so many things to, to get caught up in where it's like, if I was an artist, me personally, I just pick a, a a lane. Like today's music, I would pick a lane, pick a niche, right? Let's say I wanted to do like 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 say I was like raised in like a house where my family never listened to no rap, mm -hmm. no nothing new. They only listen to like nineteen seventies shit. I would make nineteen seventies fucking music right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I would portray myself as an artist that relates to these people new, but I would still give you some of the nineteen seventies shit. And then I wouldn't even have to pay, I wouldn't even pay attention to this dude shit 
and then I would just carry my fan base off that. Yeah. Because it's like, that's kind of where we're at. It's like, you can be, an, you can, hey, I'm going to give you what I give you. Like, you could be a Leon Bridges. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he's from the 1960s. Or what's that one dude who went viral a couple years ago and then, like, King George, he had that song that sounded like some Motown shit. Mm -hmm. But it, went, oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. went viral, you know what I'm saying? And he's a young artist. Like, nowadays you can do those kind of things and stay... If you want to avoid having to do the rigmarole with the internet, if you if you trying to be the the upfront relevant guy, yeah, then you need to know how to play that, that internet game. I mean, but I, look I don't at think it. you can. I I think you can get around it if you yeah. find a lane that's a weird ass lane like that. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I go back to my boy Tizo to yeah, have too. that vibe and stand on that. Right, like this yeah. is me. Right, I got nails in my hair. I got I'm wearing football pads and tights. Yeah, on some regular shit. I got the flower mic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I got this whole swag about me and standing on it and being like, this is what it is. And having having the music, mm -hmm. you know, be what it is. Like, I think but that see, is... I'd rather be a Tizo yeah. than, like... I'd rather be, like, a Tizo, somebody that you can make a decision on than... You know what I mean? Like, these people who are just lost in... Like, there's artists now that are just lost in the abyss. And they have good songs. Like, I can go, go on my playlist now. Like, oh, I listen to... Your song all the time. And if I met him, I would probably be like, hey, I don't know you, but I listen to your song all the time. Mm -hmm. Because they're like in the abyss of the million songs on Spotify. Yeah. And then you got like an artist like Tizo who's fucking weird. But you can clearly hear how talented he is yeah. through the music. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's different, man. But I rather he just stands get, on I that know. shit. I think, I, I think that lane is more better nowadays. To me, I'm more interested in stuff like that than the typical... Rigmarole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just admire being able to stand on that. I mean, imagine getting lost as as Tizo and somebody being like, damn, this dude's a weirdo. Look at the boots he's wearing. Look at the, mm -hmm. the and then him fuck his whole shit up and be like, all right, fuck it. They ain't fucking with me. Yeah. And and change his shit change based his on shit. the comments or yeah, cause the question early shit himself. When he was or getting whatever. laughed at when he was standing in front of the garage and he had Man, the soda pads lie. on. And he was making that that stuff, the early stuff, the stuff he before was, the pandemic. Yeah. That shit was, he was getting laughed at. I didn't he like, didn't I, give a fuck, though. Some artist showed me that shit. That they were like, he looked. He didn't like, care. He didn't care. You know what I mean? He would have been done after that. Yeah. If you think about it, if you would have listened, so. Yeah, but he got some good shit, though. Yeah, but I think it's important. And even Does just. Does the cream rise to the top to you? Yeah. In the music industry? Uh, I, think it, I think it always will. I think it always will. Because I think that's kind of the route he rode was he just yeah no nah, I top think because off his bro like, his skill set undeniable Talent. bro yeah. undeniable like I don't have to watch his you know what I'm saying like if his shit come on that shit is gonna cut through it's yeah. just different and it's fire like you know what yeah. I mean like it's put together very well sonically is really dope you know he talked about um he talked about how some of the dilemma he had of like finding the right mixer. He's using some random kid in Boston mm -hmm. to mix his shit. I'm thinking he was going to mention some name, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and be like, oh yeah, no, nah, that makes sense. Some kid from Boston that is it relatively it. nobody yeah. that's mixing his shit. And his shit to me sounds incredible. Yeah, no, You know what I'm saying? Lot, it has a like a whole texture a lot to mixing it. too. A lot of layers to his music. A lot of layers. So, yeah. you know, and he's very particular. So like, and I admire that shit, bro. Like, I, I love when, you know, especially in this day and age when people is just kind of mm -hmm. cookie cutter, just dropping shit, you know, and, and looking at it as like, well, if I put out however much music in the streaming age, like, it's quantity over quality a lot of times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how much can we fit on this shit? And that's, a, that's why I asked you, do you think that cream rises, the cream rises to the top? For sure. Because... If the if you truly believe that and if you're an artist and you truly believe that, then doing the quantity over quality thing is counterproductive. You know what I mean? Yeah, should, I mean you should kind of believe that. You know what I mean? Like like when man, we wanna, like like when we would do the first the early albums yeah, like Rod. Right, yeah, every song we recorded went on the album for sure because he was only recording. Yeah, he was intentional. He had exactly he yeah, had confidence in yeah, hey, yeah. I'm recording this song and for this sure. is going on the album. 100%. But now but you have a lot of people that make like 100 songs. But I ain't going to lie. Pick. I I'm playing devil's advocate as far as that process of being creative and making a bunch of songs, there's always going to be hmm. in those processes cuz I was a part of that type of process. Okay, that's, that you was more closer to your it process. It was more yeah, like volume uh -huh. of like 
let's get the hottest shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It can definitely does it become, become overwhelming. It can point? become overwhelming. What I was like, gonna yeah, say. We got 120. Yeah, well, nah. The thing is, like, there's always gonna be those ones. Like, what's the ones that we can't stop playing out yeah. of this batch? And out of that batch, who could I give this record to to throw on their joint? Or could I yeah. use this joint for a soundtrack or whatever the case? If you're only making all right, this 17, 18 songs is just for the album. And that's all I did. Yeah, you and it's be like you're kind of limited a little bit. Yeah, you guys, you better be ready. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, it's, so I, I, I do agree with just you know, but it does get a little overwhelming, you know. But um, yeah, because that's my thing. Sometimes, like if I'm in the process where it's like we're making tons of songs, yeah, then you become at a certain point you have to it, you change hats. Yeah, it goes from hey we recording and cre- getting creative to now we got to put our business hat on become A&Rs and know what to pick because it's a lot of shit to pick from. Yeah. I don't know. That shit overwhelms me. Yeah. Let me, matter of fact, this is a good point. I'm a, um, I want to bring in my brother A.O. Juan, who's been working with Khaled for years mm-hmm. um, to talk about this because Khaled, he's, he's pretty intentional as yeah. well, but he definitely but he has leftovers. a lot of music. Yeah. yeah so, he has to make a lot of music. Yeah. Because so let, let's tap him with Juan. He has to produce through. Yeah. Hey, yo, Juan, what's up, my brother? What's good, my brother? Ain't nothing, man. We right here. Yo, we were just talking about something I wanted to tap you in. Talk to me. So, when y'all creating the album, right? Y'all, yeah. y'all working on the legendary album right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Do y'all, like, if y'all doing 18 songs, you, you record 18 songs? Or you could do a batch and then you pick through the hottest shit? Pretty much the process is different every, each and every single time, like, it depends on, it really depends on how he starts his process. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like if he's on, on vac- uh, like if he's on uh, an island like Bahamas or wherever, like he gets inspired just by where he's at, how he's moving. So it, it, it really depends on how he he gets inspired. But, yeah. you know, it, it's, it really falls on him how, how the, the songs come together. Okay. I just help him. I, I, what I do is I help him accomplish the, the the vision. Yeah, don't downplay it. No, I'm saying I'm saying like like it, collectively we work. You know, we, we work together. We, we we work well together. So you know, like you know, I'm not downplaying what I do, but you know, like he um he he he, he the way he puts like it's 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 always in, inspiring to see how 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 the greats work because. Um, the way he puts records together, the way he comes out with with the ideas, is incredible. You know, like like there's a certain you know, magic I've, to I've it. Learned, I, 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 I've learned a lot from his process. Like mm-hmm. even on, on, on when I'm working on other people's projects, I put that that what I've learned from him because like you know I'm a sponge in the game. I, I've learned I, I learn and as soon as I as soon as I, I I grasp a good idea. I put it to practice in my own life, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. like, it, it's inspiring to learn from from someone like like Khaled himself on how he puts records together. That's why he's very he's very when he's putting uh, when he's putting records together, he 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 he's he he's he's locked in. Like, he already knows what he what he wants. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of people that tell me, "Oh, look, Pitts, um, Khaled, this record or this beat." And I'm like, man, the way he puts his his yeah. albums together, he's super locked in. Like he knows what he wants. Like, yeah, he, it's really hard to to pitch him a record because he knows yeah. what, what he's going after. How long y'all been in locked in? We've been uh, we've been working since 2014, so mm-hmm. ten years ten, now. Ten years, ten years, man. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Congrats on that. That's some good a lot work. of history. Yeah, appreciate it. A lot of hits. So, with 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 three engineers on the phone, man, I I, I kind of want to jump into. A, I just got a question for you. So, do you do the mixing and the recording? Well, no, I I, I I'm the one that does like the first. Uh, I would say the first mix. Like, yeah, you're the you know, core. You're I'm so the you're the core. Set, I, I get I get all the vocals. I get all the sessions, and I already know more or less how he likes. The songs to sound, so I do the first mix. I do the, like you know, I add the sauce to it, the drops, the you know, like how he would want the record to. Like I, I treat it like when when I get it, like I'm doing the final mix. Yeah. And then so, I, 
after after I I put I, I put my hands on it, then we send it to like a Manny Mariquin mm-hmm. or Lou Diaz to fi- a final do the final mix. Because mm-hmm. because you're engineering for a, a producer. See, I engineer for a producer. I, I used to engineer for Tricky. I used to engineer for um, uh, Shakespeare. I used to engineer for a bunch of producers back in the day. So uh, the reason why I asked that question was because. You're you're a part of the inception. You help create what the the mix engineers, everybody else touches. Correct. Like you're a part of the actual creation. So me personally, I call that a production engineer. That's just me. What yeah. I call it now, mm-hmm. because be, but do you feel like the mix engineer, the tracking engineer in today's time? Do you think that that still exists? Like those titles, like the mastering engineer, the the did this engineer, the this engineer. I'm I only do man. Do you feel like that? And the reason why I'm asking this question, just just from my side, is it seems like the only true mix engineers I ever meet have been mixing since the '90s. <laughs> All the new guys. Record, mix, produce, <laughs> write. They do something else <laughs> to help with the inception of those records. Yeah, it's, well, because, you know, the, the mix engineers, um, the ones from the 90s and the 80s, and, you know, those guys, they still, you know, you know what it is that in this industry, and especially, like, the, uh, the, the, the engineering side of the industry, it's been watered down a lot since a lot of people they've entered the industry not knowing how to really mix, not knowing. So they, they, they've learned how to mix from their homeboy that learned how to use pro tools on, on whatever. So they, when they mix, they're just mixing in the box. They're not going through a D to A converter. They're not doing like what you're supposed to, Mm-hmm. originally like what you're supposed to do you know what i'm saying they're just doing the shortcut giving you the oh yo i mixed it i put a couple plugins on a couple buses and it's mixed mm-hmm. and it might sound good you know what i'm saying some people know how to do that well you know yeah. what i'm saying but you know this is it's like it's like i, I it's like that's like a like a, a honda toyota camry mixing <laughs> You want a Rolls Royce, <laughs> you, you want a Lamborghini, well, then you got to, you know, it, 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 there's certain things you got to do if you want that type of mix. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, you can't just expect, like, oh, because I mixed it in the box and put a couple plugins on the ma- master bus and on the, on the, on the, on the vocal buses and the, Stuff, it don't work like that, you know. What mm-hmm. I'm saying? There's, there's levels to that, so you know the people that are not well informed about the industry, they do that and they think that they're top notch engineers and yeah. engineers, and it's, that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I feel you. I feel you. Now I was just asking the question because I see a, I see a lot now to where it's like to me the engineering game has changed so much from what was taught before me. To where I kind of be looking at the structure of, let's say it's like a a, a Nikki, right? A Nikki Bond, um, Jack Harlow's guy, right? Mm-hmm. Nikki, he does. He can mix. He can mix. He can mix good. He do, he's mixed a couple. He mixed the uh, the the record that Jack did with Rod, right? The final mix on that. Yeah. But there will be scenarios where he won't do the mix. But to me, I think that he can mix. You know what I mean? So it's like. You're, you're, it's just this weird gray area that's happening to me in the industry. Like how you explain like, oh, there's certain guys that ain't in the box, which tells me you and Khaled and, and your team and you guys, what you're doing are, y'all are, your mixes, like your your rough mix might sound better than a lot of guys' final mix, but you're still going to send it to <laughs> to get that Ferrari. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not um, as, as you got to it, it, it dep- like it all really depends on on the artist the, and, and what they're going after. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Certain artists take their craft very serious, and they'll they'll have a recording engineer, uh, uh, a recording. They'll have several recording engineers and uh, several re- um, mixing engineers. Mm-hmm. So they're not just depending on uh, on just one one engineer. Which you know that's when I was taught when I was taught like what how they taught me in, at school was like 
if you're just depending on one engineer, you're done. Like, like you can mm-hmm. never depend on one engineer, or engineer to record, to mix, to master. Like, like if you're doing that, you might as well just retire and pick another industry. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and that's and that's what a lot of people need to understand that, like, you know, every ear is different. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you uh, one one engineer might be good at at, at mixing beats. Another mm-hmm. engineer might be good at um, mixing vocals. Another engineer might be uh, good at mastering. Like mm-hmm. you know, everyone has a specialty, so you gotta you gotta you gotta u- utilize people for what they're good at. So if this mm-hmm. one person is good at um, mixing the beats, like make sure he mix the the, the beat stems. Use the other engineer, like yeah, you know what I'm saying? like the guys like KY, like KY will get a mix and he'll only mix the low end, and yeah, then he'll exactly. ship it to somebody gotta, else, gotta, and it'll still be a hit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. Listen, man. How's this new album sounding? Talk to me. Uh, nah, it's crazy. It's crazy. When, <laughs> when y'all hear it, yeah, y'all, y'all gonna see why. The same, same, same with last album. Last album, like you know, the 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 like the, the um the biggest the biggest record was the God did record. Mm-hmm. And you see what that that did? That was on mm-hmm. C- uh, CNN and CN. Uh, all those, um, um, everyone was talking mm-hmm. about it. Even mm-hmm. the, the Grammy the stage. Politicians, p- politicians were talking about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. She's a real I song. A, she got it. I, I was on a video <laughs> on, on I, was it, I don't even know if it was CNN, but one of those 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 politic channels, I, I was on a video coming out in the studio working on God This. So it was crazy, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy, and, and this album is only gonna get bigger. That's what's mm-hmm. up, man. Nah, I hope it goes crazy yes, for you, uh, my brother. Yes, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's the it's the legendary Ayo Juan right here, man. man did the, but hold on, here, did the, did the Drake vocals come in yet? Uh he got two of them. He got two records. Oh Drake. man, two. Mm, so, that's what's up. Sounds man. about right. He got two. That's what's up, man. And then we were talking about production too, man. Like, what's the um? I know my brother Street Runner is a go to. Some of the go tos for Cali on, on the production side. He, he he works a lot with Street Runner, um, um, T, uh, TM is mm-hmm. another one. If I'm not mistaken, TM K, Tay Keith. Um, mm-hmm. who's the other guys? If I'm not mistaken, Tay Keith, Cool and Dre. He works with. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a it's a few other guys that he I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, There's a few other guys that he works with. Okay, you know what I'm saying. But it's pretty consistent across all the albums. He works with a lot of guys. You know what I'm saying? A lot of yeah, the same he, guys. Yeah, he 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 normally he typically he typically um tries to to work with the same people. Yeah, most of the time. That's what's up, man. That's how he, what's he, up, man? He, he does. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Hey, man. I'm going to let you get back to it, man. I appreciate you, my brother. Hey, before nah, we go, sound- one one last thing. One last thing before we go, man. We go. Just give him the cliche okay. advice, man. Come on, bro. We got to give it to him. What, what's some advice you got for the young engineers, man, the young listeners, man? Come on. Just give me just one thing. You tell a young engineer or a young producer. You know, like, um, the best advice that I could give anyone is, man, like, if, if there's something out there you love to do, uh, and and t- this is to engineers and to anybody, really anybody, if there's something that you love, like give it your all, mm-hmm. even if it means going broke, mm-hmm. even if it means like, um, even if it means going through the worst situations, because that's gonna show you how much you really love what you do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you give it to all, I've never, I've never heard a story of someone that was consistent at something and failed. Mm. Never. So if you're a young engineer, young producer, and you're consistent at what you're doing, you're, you're, you're seeking knowledge, you're, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're giving it your all, even going through the worst situations eventually you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna reach your destination but you just gotta be consistent because mm-hmm. if you let a bad situation determine whether you're gonna continue pursuing your dreams or not 
then it wasn't meant for you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So okay. consistency is key in this industry. Nah, you bro, know, trust me. You know what? You know how it is. Bruce, <laughs> you gotta, is, you gotta give it your all. <laughs> if you don't, like, you know, next man mm-hmm. up. That's how it is. Hey, <laughs> leave us with like a Khaled, a Khaled vibe, like, like a saying, like you know what I'm saying? He like, <laughs> he like, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> he like, man, I'm chilling. Nah, I'm just fuck. I'm just fucking with you. But nah, one thing he says, now nah, to your point, he said, yo. They don't open the door. You got to knock the door down and hand them the hinges. <laughs> nah, that's my, that's one of my that's favorite one joints. Of the most, that's <laughs> one of them. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, thank you for reminding me. That's one of my favorite ones that I've ever heard him say. <laughs> was, yo, oh, they don't want to open the door? Okay. Take the hinges <laughs> off and give it to them. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my brother. Saying? I appreciate you, man. Nah, anytime. It's love, my brother. All right, I love my brother. All right, yes, uh, Juan, yo. Yeah, man. Shout out to my brother Juan. Khaled album on the way. Yeah, man. Um, good insight right there. So yeah, it's always good to, to hear from other engineers because you know, there's so many different types homies. of engineers and such different things that you'll be doing. You know what I mean? Like somebody still him being a producer's engineer. I started as a producer's engineer, so yeah, that shit is. Like being a maybe we could touch on this on a different episode, yeah. But being a producer's engineer versus an artist engineer versus a freelance, you're just in the city taking different clients every day. I already know that how we gonna do different. that. That shit is different. So we're gonna have a whole break it down round table. Yeah, yeah, of, we can break it down though. Cause nah, yeah. it's gonna get crazy. Cause yeah, it's, it's different. Crazy. It's different. I got my brother Juice. Like he, like he's been with an artist. So yeah. he, it was a different experience for him being with an artist for ten years. Mm-hmm. Me, I was with a producer for five years and then was an artist. After being a producer and yeah. I get freelance, so yeah. it's just different, you know what I mean. So it's always good to have that insight, man. So Not for sure, I don't know. I enjoy combos like that. No, I love it, man. Shout out to my brother Juan. Um, man, thank y'all for tuning in. We gonna put a wrap it up. Yeah, wrap this one up. Yeah, let's man. wrap it up. We gonna man. wrap this one up. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Tune into the next episode coming soon. And um, this is Cruz and Trav signing off. Yeah, hands. hands, man.